And that's what it is. And we're seeing here uh, Donald Trump at his desk in the Oval Office signing these pieces of paper, executive orders, and um, dictating the law affecting not just 320 million Americans, but vast numbers um, in the wider world. And for much of American uh, presidential history, they've been used sparingly. But particularly since the time of Bill Clinton and through boy George Bush and Obama and now Trump, they're being used um, constantly to dictate the law and the lives of 320 million people with the signature of one man. And um, let's give you a, an idea of how they are used. Each one of these pages, not too light, but you can see it. Each one of these pages, each one of these lines on the page is an executive order that was signed into law by boy George Bush in his period of office. And they go on page after page after page after page after page. Swish of the pen, law of the land. And the reason that I used to um, write and talk about these things um, quite some time ago is because the basis on which they are claimed to be legal and that a president can do this is like, uh, where is it? They justify swish of the pen, law of the land, by two statements in the US Constitution. And uh, these are those, I kid you not. The first one is Article 2, Section 1 of the US Constitution, which says the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. And, yes, so the president of the United States is the top of the pile of the executive arm of government. Executive orders? Nowhere. The other one is um, Article 2, Section 3, which says the president shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Yeah. Laws passed in the political system have to be faithfully executed, and the president has to oversee that. Swish of the pen, law of the land? Nowhere. And that's what they justify these things on. So here's Trump um, signing these things uh, day after day uh, in his uh, first days in office. And I'm asking, where is the constitutional legality of this being done? Not just by Trump, but by Obama, by Bush, by Clinton, by all the others. And it... <laughs> Because it's Trump and all the uproar of, of, of him becoming president, um, executive orders are now in the news. But these have been signed. Look at all those with Bush. These have been signed, most of them without really being reported uh, at any length. And what has happened with Swish of the Pen, Law of the Land? is that a whole list of executive orders have been um, brought into waiting in the case of a state of emergency being called. And who calls that? The government. And if a state of emergency is called, um, at that point, all these executive orders in waiting kick in and become law. And um, what we're looking at is a police state, Orwellian state on steroids, 
sitting there, thanks to executive orders, waiting to become reality. This is, um, this is what they say. Um, each one of these is a different executive order. Um, one, to seize all communications media in the United States. That means officially, instead of unofficially like now. Uh, seizure of all electric power, fuels and minerals, public and private. Seizure of all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks or vehicles of any kind. And total control of highways, seaports and waterways. Seizure of all American people for work forced under uh, federal supervision, including the splitting of families if the government finds it necessary. Seizure of all health, education and welfare facilities, public and private. Empowered the uh, postmaster uh, general to register all men, women and children in the United States. Seizure of all airports and aircraft. Seizure of all housing and finance authorities to establish forced relocation. Designated areas to be abandoned as, quote, unsafe. Another executive order, seizure of all railroads, inland waterways and storage facilities, public and private. And on June the 3rd, 1994, President Clinton encompassed all those executive orders into one. And uh, the uh, beloved of the progressive movement, Barack Obama, um, updated and confirmed that Clinton executive order in 2012. Don't remember any protests then when this was put into being. All through one person signing a piece of paper. Absolute madness. I'll give you an idea of the kind of things that, um, that can be done this way. Franklin Roosevelt signed an executive order in 1941 uh, ordering the internment of 120,000 Japanese Americans, many of whom were American citizens. And then the, of course, Orwellian Homeland Security was brought into being by George Bush in 2001 in the uh, wake of 9-11. Uh, and Homeland Security, thanks to an executive order, uh, took centralised control of 40 federal agencies. Now, like I say, there was a time when the alternative media was highlighting the outrageous nature of executive orders. And some of us still are. But it's, it's quite a sight now to uh, see the, the Trump supporting uh, alternative media in America, not only not highlighting the fact that these um, swish of the pen, law of the land uh, orders are absolutely beyond words anti-democratic. It's not, it's not democracy. It's not an open society to, um, to have one man with so much power dictating to 320 million people. That's not democracy. It's a tyranny. It's a dictatorship. And that's not just because Trump's doing it. It was the same with everyone else. The difference is that the alternative media that's now uh, Trump supporting was once highlighting uh, executive orders in the way that I'm talking about. Now they're cheering him on as he's signing them. And, you know, we either believe in fairness, we believe in justice, and we believe in a free and open society, or we don't. It's no good saying, well, executive orders are terrible and, and illegal and unconstitutional when a president we don't like is signing things we don't agree with. But, oh, if, if a president we like is signing things we do agree with, well, well, executive orders, that's good. 
They're either wrong and anti-democratic or they're not. And they are wrong, quite demonstrably. I mean, look at some fascist dictator. Uh, what do they do? They dictate one person to the population they control. It's what an executive order is doing. One person, no debate, no debate um, in the wider political system, no public debate. And so when we look at what is happening in the United States, um, as these executive orders unfold, is that we're seeing the polarization of American society in, in, with extraordinary precision. I mean, we're talking about basically um, half and half. And I know the Trump supporting uh, alternative media think he's anti-establishment and anti the global cabal. But, you know, th there's more than one way of bringing out uh, about an outcome. And if you are a few and you want to control the many, then you have to divide and rule the many. You can't uh, have the many standing side by side in unity um, against what you're doing. You need to um, keep them focused on fighting each other. Then they won't see what you're doing, which is the situation we have. And therefore, um, chaos, upheaval, is what they want. And that's what they have. I mean, since Trump came in, he's been kept in chaos in the sense of the, the uh, provo provocative uh, things that he said. And uh, the fact that he signs a executive order to stop immigration from a list of countries um, without pre-warning and allowing preparation among the agencies and the airport authorities that have to administer what he's dictating without them being pre-warned so it can be done in some kind of smooth manner or smoother, no, that's it, get on with it. Cool. What happened? Chaos. And then you've got the uh, all the protests against uh, Trump and the idiots um, starting fires and smashing windows at Barclay this week. Um, that's all part of this divide and rule chaos that's unfolding. It's not uh, an accident that the uh, Latin motto of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry is Ordo Ab Chao, order out of chaos, or what I call problem reaction solution. It's because this is the currency they use to impose their will on society by creating chaos and then offering the order out of the chaos, their order, their changes in society to respond to the chaos they have covertly created. So if, um, if you look at what I've been saying and writing uh, for a long time, it's been um, in part that the plan is to create, um, in effect, civil war, not just in the United States, but in Europe too. Um, and that is uh, a perfect situation for the manipulators of human society. Because first of all, people are focused on each other and fighting each other. Instead of coming together and, and seeing the common uh, um, thread, the common theme, the common um, enemy of freedom, which is clearly now what's happening in America. And it also justifies problem, reaction, solution. Your police state to um, respond to the chaos and respond to the violence and the conflict. 
and bring the military involved because that's what they want. All these things become possible once you have chaos and divide and rule. And that's where we are. And it, it's not just um, Trump that's playing his part in creating this division. It's also those that are protesting against him. And, you know, I go back to what I said about either we believe in an open and free society or we don't. And these progressives that are so vehemently opposing uh, Trump, uh, they seem to um, have one rule for a democratic president like Obama and another for people like Trump. Surely we should have the same criteria for both. They stood by and watched Obama um, bomb the innocent in Libya and Syria. And um, they watched uh, a, a regime in the White House and the Pentagon manipulating um, so-called uh, um, people's revolutions in Libya and Syria to justify their murderous interventions. And where were the progressives then? Where were people in pink hats in vast numbers uh, marching on Washington? Nowhere. Why is it um, one law and one rule for one and one rule for the other? It should be the same. And what you see with these uh, progressives, as with many Trump supporters, they don't uh, understand how the world works and how the processes of manipulation work. You have a man, for instance, in George Soros, the billionaire, who funds progressive organizations. Why would George Soros fund progressive organizations? Because if you want to control the game, you have to control both sides in the game. You control one side, you influence the game. You control both sides, you control the game. And his role is controlling the progressive side of this polarity. And so you have all those people in their pink hats uh, going on those marches against Trump. And 50 of those so-called partners in that operation were connected to George Soros. The same George Soros whose organizations were behind the manipulation of the um, so-called Arab Spring that led to uh, the excuse to send the boys in to places like Libya and Syria. So if we're going to stop this divide and rule, if we're going to stop these polarities being played off against each other while those in the shadows laugh, people need to get informed and streetwise about what's actually going on and how it works. You see, I'm, I'm hearing uh, this week that Trump has imposed a Muslim ban. No, he's not. He's imposed uh, an immigration ban on a list of countries, most of which have been targets of the United States and were listed by an organization called Project for the New American Century in September 2000, which came to power with the Bush administration were listed for regime change. So where, if it's a Muslim ban, is the ban on anyone from Saudi Arabia and Qatar that have been exposed for funding terrorists, funding ISIS? Where's the ban on them? You've got to see the shades of grey and not black and white. It's not about a ban on Muslims. 
It's about targeting Muslims that suit the agenda and leaving Muslims alone, like the Saudis in their grotesqueness, the Saudi royal family, leaving them alone to go on funding terrorism. Why? Because if you have terrorism, you have a problem. You have chaos to which you can offer your order out of chaos. And we have the mainstream media in America, of course, cheering on and winding up the anti-Trump uh, protests. Uh, but where were they when Obama was bombing the innocent in Libya and Syria? Where were the progressives when that was going on? Nowhere. Where, where were they when Obama was dramatically slowing down um, immigration by people from Iraq during his period in office? Where were they? Where um, are the, the, the celebrities standing at microphones? Oh, look, look, I'm ever so, I'm ever so kind, I am, I care. Where were they when Obama was also peddling his mayhem and his injustice? Nowhere. And, you know, most celebrities, the vast majority, they care about image. Anyone think that standing up against Trump is not just another part of that image creation? Oh, look, she's great, he's great, they're anti-Trump. What a mess. What a mess it all is. And just when we need some street wiseness and some uh, calmness to meet the uh, challenge that is Donald Trump. We're getting posturing and being uh, played like a stringed instrument to march and protest when people are told the agenda wants civil war and conflict between peoples in the United States and Europe. If people do not want what the conspiracy wants in the shadows, then we need to stop fighting among ourselves. Doesn't mean uh, we don't um, en masse cease to cooperate with our own enslavement and things that we find morally uh, reprehensible. But violence and marching for marching sake is gonna take us nowhere. If people wanna challenge what's happening, then stop cooperating with it. Stop obeying the laws that you find grotesque, unjust and unacceptable instead of just putting a pink hat on and marching over uh, uh, to the White House. Oh yeah, oh look, CNN's there, they're all taking pictures. And now we're going home. Yeah, and what's changed? Uh, nothing. And there are challenges with Trump, big time. And, you know, I, I wish the Trump supporting um, alternative media would get its head in gear and start seeing the shades of grey instead of uh, becoming uh, no more than um, a promotional operation for Donald Trump. Oh, Donald, everything you do is great. No, it's not. He's given um, control of the American economy to Goldman Sachs. He said he would uh, prosecute... Um, Hillary Clinton, of course, or that's the person the, the progressives wanted, Hillary Clinton. One of the most corrupt politicians in American history with her husband. They come as a pair. And think of the competition for being the most corrupt politician in American history. Oh, he was going to uh, prosecute 
um, her for um, corruption. First thing he did when he won, just say he wasn't going to do that because they're good people. No, they're not. And that's another part of this progressive lunacy that they were all so upset when one of the most corrupt politicians in American history didn't win. What they should be uh, looking at is not this person or that person. That's the divide and rule polarity uh, um, illusion. What we should be looking at is how a system supposedly representing the people is so rigged that it gives you the choice between Clinton and Trump for someone that can sign into law with a single signature. We have um, Trump uh, handing uh, the Pentagon, the um, national security uh, advisor role, and homeland security, here we go, to military people. We have uh, Mad Dog Mattis as uh, Defense Secretary in the Pentagon, and this guy, Michael Flynn, National Security Advisor, who are vehemently, vehemently anti-Iran, who work in an alliance currently with Russia and China. And so things with Iran are kicking off. You know, when you've got someone as um, narcissistic as Donald Trump, who can't even leave criticism on Twitter without having to respond. The ego is so hurt. When you've got that kind of mentality um, in, in control of the American military and in a situation where signing his signature changes the law, you are indeed in a potentially very dangerous situation. And so it's not uh, protest and violence and fires and smashing up that we need to respond to this uh, now. We need calmness. We need people to see that actually it's not black and white, there are shades of grey. And that Trump, in his own way, is just as much a tool of the swamp as um, all his predecessors. And we need to come together. Stop hurling insults at each other in terms of um, you're racist, you're this, you're that, if you disagree with them. And in unity, cease to cooperate with that we find deeply offensive and deeply unacceptable, but also to have the, the decency to realize and accept that everyone has the right to an opinion, not just those we agree with. And what I find um, equally disturbing equally disturbing in this polarity war to the potential dangers of a Trump administration is the way the heart on the sleeve progressives who are opposing him, saying it's fascism, have become, not just in America, but around the world, the new authority, the new censors, the new big brother, dictating what opinions people can have, what views they can have, who they can support and who they can't without having uh, abuse heard, heard, and, 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 and labels hurled in their direction. Like I said at the start, um, we need to understand that for divide and rule to happen, you need at least two sides two polarities you can play off against each other. And you know what you find with those polarities? That despite what these say they stand for and what they say they stand for, 
and, and all the rhetoric and the, the slogans. When you look at them closely, they're always mirrors of each other. And the dip.